So basically, uh, chapter number five, portfolio risk analytical methods. Let's try to understand this chapter. Uh, it's going to be a little huge, okay? Because the content is huge. Lots of formulas to actually remember, but there's no choice. We have to, and uh, there could be a scenario wherein on the exam, you could perhaps get zero questions from this particular chapter, maybe max one. And there could be a, if you are in that particular window or that particular day, you could have possibly three questions as well, just from this particular chapter. So let's try to understand this. It is interesting. I would say this, it's very interesting. Okay. So, uh, this is how the chapter is actually structured. So first off, we'll talk about the chapter name is portfolio risk, right? So we're going to be talking about some, uh, VAR measures that works on a portfolio level. Okay. We are, we're talking about the entire portfolio level. So the first one we have is the individual war. That's what we will talk about. We'll talk about the diversified war and, uh, undiversified war as well. So these are the three things that we will talk about. And they actually talk about the war on a portfolio level. Okay. So that's the first intuition that you need to understand. Secondly, when we talk about the war, there's going to be some tools that we will use. Okay. So first one would be a marginal war. We will calculate, we'll try to calculate the incremental war. And the third one is the component war that we have. Okay. So these are the three different tools. So the reason I I've drawn this thing is because you will have a better clarity as to, okay, this and this is different. These are the three tools that we will use in this particular chapter. And then finally, using the tools that we have, okay. And understanding the portfolio war measures, we're going to be moving from the risk measurement, right? These are the things that, that help us to measure the risk. In the last section, we will talk about the risk management. How do you use these tools to understand or manage your portfolio? That is what the entire chapter is all about. Okay. So in the last section, we'll talk about the risk management. Specifically, we will first move our portfolio to the global minimum risk level using this particular tool. And the next thought process will be to move our portfolio to the optimal level and using this particular thing. So I think this entire section, I've, I've taken a picture from Garp and uh, that's going to give you much more clarity because that is missing in Schweizer. If you go directly from Schweizer, uh, I think you'll not be able to appreciate the content. There's a lot of things that is, that is, that is, that is missing out. So let's go slow and steady. This is what the context is for this particular chapter. Okay. So first learning objective, define, calculate, and distinguish between portfolio VAR measures. As I said, we are talking about on a portfolio level right now. So two things that the curriculum has made a note of. And the first one is the Delta normal models that we will be using. So we are calculating VAR, right? What methodology are we using in VAR? So we are using the Delta normal VAR model. And we are assuming that in a portfolio, you may have certain securities, let's say TCS, IBM, uh, Tesla, Apple, any securities, right? We are assuming that all the securities are having a normally distributed returns that we will use to calculate war. That's the first thing. And secondly, we're going to be using some traditional portfolio analysis techniques as well, because we have two things here. When we calculate the VAR, we will have the variances or the volatility, right? And we will also have on a portfolio level, we will also have covariances or correlation between or among the different port, uh, securities that we have. And that is why sometimes, uh, you know, we'll be using this covariance matrix approach as well. I'll talk about this as well, but this is just a context that you need to know. And I think this is all that we need to know for this particular slide. Okay, so let's talk about the portfolio VAR measures that we have. So first off, this is a simple, a very simple portfolio that I've drawn here. And as you can see that I have four securities. The first one is TCS. 
IBM, then ABC and XYZ, whatever the companies are. And uh, if I want to find out as a portfolio manager, if I want to find out the bar of only TCS, okay, out of my entire portfolio, if I want to find the bar of TCS, then I can calculate something known as individual bar. So this is the war of an individual position in just isolation. I'm not considering the other securities, no correlation, nothing. Only uh, simple, you know, looking at one position at a time. So that is known as an individual war. How do I calculate that? War is simply nothing, but you take the standard deviation, right? Of TCS, you'll be taking the standard deviation. You'll be taking... Uh, the amount of money that you've invested in TCS, right? The position in TCS, and you'll be multiplying that with the Z critical value. So now do not get confused with the first chapter wherein we mu minus sigma, do not worry about that. This is the formula that we have to understand for a portfolio level setting, okay? So we are taking the position, multiplying by the, uh, the standard deviation or the volatility and the Z critical value. So given these numbers, you can calculate the individual VAR only for TCS alone. And that will give you a view that in your entire portfolio, how much TCS is contributing towards the value at risk, right? So that's the first thing that you can calculate. Okay, moving on, let's talk about now on a portfolio level, let's talk about a mix up of TCS, IBM and so on and so forth. If they have some sort of a correlation, do we get some benefits, right? Because we know that the correlation will, uh, you know, you will have an efficient frontier and you get diversification benefits. Yes, so we can factor these things when we calculate the value, of, uh, value at risk of the portfolio. Remember, this is the portfolio we are talking about. So we have the Z critical value of the entire portfolio the standard deviation or the volatility of the portfolio wherein wherein we are now let's talk about the two assets only one and two i can factor in the correlation between these two assets and the amount that i've invested in these things and how do you calculate the two asset variance well you need the weight of one this entire formula the volatility of one squared the weight of two the ibm and the volatility of IBM squared plus two times the weight of one, weight of two, the correlation between TCS and IBM, and then the volatility of TCS and IBM. So once you plug in here, you get the variance of the entire portfolio. Take the square root of this, you get the volatility. Plug in the volatility here, that's your critical value. The amount that you've invested, and you get the VAR, of the entire portfolio. Hold on, I've just taken two assets here. When we have multiple assets, in our example, we have four, we can uh, use a different formula that we have, okay? But let's talk about the correlation. So one thing is clear that within a portfolio, we cannot neglect the importance of correlation. We really have to appreciate the correlation parameters here. So move on to undiversified bar. So we have an undiversified bar. That means no diversification. There is no correlation or maybe zero or they are in a perfect correlation, positive, perfect correlation. So how do we, you know, take care of these uh, things here? Well, in that situation, if you have a zero correlation, that means no correlation at all. In that situation, you calculate the VAR by taking the square root. Yeah. So what do you do is that you take the VAR of one, the TCS, plus the VAR of the other one, the IBM, you square both of them, and you take the square root of the squared wars and you get the VAR of the portfolio for a zero correlation because the entire thing, so there is a derivation given in the curriculum as well. I went through it, but I don't think so. It's important for us because there are plenty of formulas which will come forward in, in, the, in the next section that we have. So remember these formulas, 
helpful yes absolutely right so if the correlation is zero we are just taking the square root of the square of the words that's it and if the correlation is one between two assets right if they are perfect one correlation then you just add up these two individual bars and you get the var of the portfolio because it's just like a one single asset right when the correlation is one it's like both are moving in the same direction right equally so it we just add it up sum it up and that's what the var of the portfolio is but what if the correlation is uh, 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 like you know some some other random numbers and you have multiple assets not just one so in that situation we have to figure out this particular thing so we have a precise formula to calculate the portfolio standard deviation for returns between several assets there are three assumptions however each asset has to be equal weightage right equally weighted that's one thing each position has the same standard deviation same volatility for tcs ibm intel whatever the companies are and each pair of returns has only one single correlation between them right so that's that's the only assumption that we have and uh, then we have a formula which is this so this is the formula which is the correlation is less than one for multiple assets only right uh, because if it is only for two assets we would have used the previous slide formula and we would have got the volatility but if there are multiple assets correlation is some other number here it is the correlation then all you that that you do is this is how you find the volatility and then you plug it in the var formula so we have the var formula the z standard deviation right and the amount that you've invested so how do you calculate this for a multiple assets you use this particular formula which is the volatility is the the correlation or the standard deviation okay one divided by n plus so this is this is a success this is one minus the success one minus the success right and the correlation that we have it here okay so this is the success ratio this is the failure rate or whatever that is multiplied by the correlation you calculate this plug in the numbers you get this particular thing okay n is the number of positions that we have the number of positions that we have this is the standard deviation which is common that's what the assumption is and p is a correlation for each pair again this is also common among all the pairs that we have okay so let's talk about the portfolio var measures that we have okay so position has five positions of two million dollars each the standard deviation of the returns is 30 percent so we have the standard deviation as 0 0.3 for each position which is a common thing the correlations between each pair is also two so the correlation is 0 0.2 calculate the var using a z score of 2.33 so standard deviation of the portfolio is the standard deviation that's the formula one divided by n success one minus one divided by n times this p so what is the correlation the correlation the standard deviation is this one divided how many assets we have five position n is equal to five one minus one divided by five and then the correlation is 0 0.2 so once you solve this thing you get the volatility of the or the standard deviation of the portfolio and then you plug in in this particular var formula we have 2.33 as a z critical value the standard deviation of the portfolio whatever the number that you get after this calculation okay and we have two million dollars that has been invested so once you calculate this you will get the var of your portfolio okay using the correlations that we have it so this is this is what the answer this is how it actually looks like the volatility you just plug in the numbers you get this plug in the number here this is the z value this is the portfolio amount multiply all three you get the var of the i feel so far it is good so far it is decent it's not uh, it's not uh, that uh, not not so difficult so far right pretty much simple stuff when we work on the portfolio bar measures 
that we have. But now move on to the next section and that is the VAR tools. Now, as I said, we have the tools that can help you calculate the value at risk as well. Now, why do we use these tools? Understand the intuition mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully you will be able to appreciate all the concepts that we have in this particular section. So to understand the VAR tools, think about it. You are a risk manager or a portfolio manager and you're trying to understand the value at risk of each of your securities. Now, your first generic question should be as a manager, right? I mean, see, understand we are using VAR not just as a number that we just, you know, tell our supervisors that, okay, this is the VAR that we have, the maximum loss that we can use. We are moving beyond that, right? And we are saying that, okay, this is our VAR. How about if I change my VAR or, or let's say this TCS position, if I change this TCS, if I add a little bit more stock, if I reduce a little bit more stock of TCS, how does it affect my value at risk? So very small position change. If I want to change that, how my portfolio, how my portfolio VAR behaves. If you want to find that, for that, we have a marginal VAR concept, wherein any small change in the position that you make, you get to know the effect on the portfolio. That's the concept of marginal VAR. Okay. And what if you want to understand on a larger basis, like, okay, you want to add maybe $10,000 of TCS, $20,000 of TCS. You want to add or subtract, right? So if there is a change in portfolio risk, when a new trade is made, a larger portion than marginal VAR, then how your portfolio VAR behaves, that is going to be given by the incremental VAR that we have. And what if you completely eliminate, let's say you don't want this ABC stock in uh, in your in your portfolio you don't you just don't uh, want this abc stock you want to just keep it out then how your portfolio var behaves does it reduces does it go up so as a manager you are trying to understand many things you are trying to understand which position should i alter to modify my var most effectively that is a thought process of having these or using these tools when it comes to risk management. So if you want to completely eliminate a position, what is a, the VAR that we, that we call it? We call it as a component VAR. What if you just remove the entire component, a stock? So it provides, so component VAR, it provides a breakdown of the total portfolio VAR. So you get to know, okay, you get to know a, a, a decomposition, a risk decomposition. Okay. The VAR of TCS is, uh, let's say 15. Uh, million dollars. The war of IBM is also, let's say, $14 million. This ABC has a war of $25 million. And this has a war of maybe $30 million. So you want to understand. So basically now you have a visual view of the, of the war, uh, uh, the risk that you have for each of the components. So if you want to remove this, your war will reduce, right? And that's how, uh, that, that's what the purpose of component VAR is. So hopefully you're getting the idea about all these three VAR tools that we have. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about this thing in a little bit more detail. Okay. So the primary purpose of using marginal incremental and component VAR is to help risk managers understand the contribution of individual assets or positions to the overall portfolio. Fair enough. Now let's talk about the marginal VAR. So the marginal VAR, it measures the impact of a small change in the position of a specific asset. You pick up one, just minutely or, or very small change that you make, you try to understand the overall riskiness of the portfolio VAR. It shows how the addition or removal of a small portion of a position will impact the overall portfolio risk. So that's what we have it here for marginal VAR. Now, let me be very honest. There's going to be plenty of 
formulas and it starts from here uh do we need to remember absolutely yes no choice you have to remember this thing and some will make sense some will not make sense right i'm i'm very honest but we we have to remember that but overall it's an intuitive chapter it's purely intuitive if you had got this intuition so far it's going to make things very simple and i've got some diagrams to help you understand in the most effective way so let's talk about marginal war what is the concept small change in investment in one company let's say tcs and how does my war changes that is what the formula is so you make some changes here and you see the effect on the war of the it can also be further it can be taken down to you know broken down into or derived into some other things as well so you can calculate the marginal var you can have the entire zz value the standard deviation and all the other things and you can have it like this so the this is the z critical value times the covariance between the asset and the portfolio divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio otherwise you can even go further and you can consider this thing to be a beta right the covariance divided by the uh, divided by standard deviation of the variance you can consider it to be the beta and you can replace that with the beta as well so this is the formula that if given there's no correlation there's no covariance that is given so you're going to have the beta okay which is replaceable to this you have the portfolio value and this is the var of the so is this important absolutely yes all the formulas yes so this is this is just the uh, definition this is the very important formula first one and this is the important formula second that's it so these are the two things that you need to i i would say that write it down really really important so that you take the z critical value the covariance between the asset and the portfolio divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio and the other one for the marginal var okay the other one is this the var of the entire portfolio you're trying to you're trying to see the measure the the entire portfolio right and what is the existing portfolio value times the beta of the asset of whatever the asset that you're changing for that these two things important practice out certain questions and that's really going to be helpful okay really really going to be helpful okay so assume portfolio x has a var so we are already given the var okay so we can use this particular formula the var is already given to be 400000 or uh, euros the portfolio is made up of four assets 1 2 3 4 4. these assets are equally weighted within the portfolio each are valued at 1 million euros asset a has a beta of 1.2 so the beta for 1 is 1.2 calculate the marginal var of a so the marginal var of the asset a has to be this particular formula the var of the entire portfolio divided by the total portfolio value times the beta of the asset so var of this portfolio is 400000 that we are given entire portfolio var is given to us we also have the notional value of the portfolio which is 1 million euros times the beta of just asset a which is 1.2 and if you calculate this you will get some number and that is going to be the marginal var of portfolio uh for 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 the asset a this is the marginal var of asset a so what is the interpretation the portfolio var will change by just 12 euros 0.12 euros for every euro change in asset a this is what the interpretation of this particular thought process is okay fair enough now moving on so this is just a simplistic calculation i've brought some other examples as well that will uh that will help you to understand others uh, other things as well so let's let's move on let's move on okay this is where the interesting things happen a lot of people get confused component var incremental var marginal var as i told you already the interpretation marginal is for a small thing for a large change incremental for a complete addition deletion risk breakdown risk decomposition that's the component 
Okay, so that's the base clarity that you should have. Okay, let's talk about the incremental. Incremental VAR evaluates the change in the portfolio risk when a new trade is made, typically representing a larger position than the marginal VAR. It reflects how portfolio VAR changes due to the addition or removal of a substantial position, capturing non-linear risk effects from larger trades. So when you have a small, it's like a linear, small change. But when you have a large change, it can capture non-linear effects as well. So I, I brought this particular thing from the curriculum. Let's try to understand it. It's very simple, not, uh, not you know, scary at all. Okay. Let's try to understand what do we mean by incremental VAR and what are the two different methods to calculate it? So there are two methods. We'll talk about the first one, which is a full revaluation method. So how does it start? So you have your initial portfolio, right? You have your portfolio, right? The TCS, the IBM and the other car stocks that we have. What do you do? You put it in, you do the valuation and you understand the covariance between or among the other portfolio. So you establish a covariance matrix, right? You put that into the valuation as well. And once you do the valuation, you calculate the VAR of the entire portfolio, just a normal process that we have, right? So we have the VAR of the portfolio right now, but then you feel that you want to add another position to your portfolio. Let's say the, the position, uh, the, the additional trade is A. So you add another position, which is A in our example. So P plus A, you do the evaluation again, the covariance matrix and all the other things. You calculate the new VAR, which is the VAR of the portfolio plus the additional asset that we have just added, right? And then if you want to calculate the incremental VAR, incremental VAR, if you want to calculate that, that is nothing but VAR of the new one minus what was your initial or the previous VAR that we have. The difference between the two is the initial uh, incremental VAR that we have. Now think about it. Is this easy? Like you are a manager and someone comes to you that, okay, you have to add new trade. Then again, you do the valuation. Okay. What is my existing war? Okay. You know this thing, but you, again, you do the valuation, the covariance matrix. It's going to take you a little bit time, right? It's going to, then again, you want to add or deduct anything. So basically what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that the full revaluation that is going to take you a lot of time. That is going to take you a lot of time. So what do we do with that? It's a very time consuming process. What do we do? We have a alternative method, but let's talk first about the full revaluation. So this is how we calculate the incremental R, the new R minus the old one. And let's talk a little bit about this full revaluation as well. So the main drawback of this particular approach is that Full revaluation requires a full revaluation of the entire portfolio with the new trade. And this can be time consuming for large portfolios. Imagine if you have multiple assets, that's, that's going to be huge, right? And one important thing that you can probably remember for the exam, maybe they can ask you this thing. Okay. Uh, that is if the VAR, so when you add this new position A, if your VAR of the entire, the new, the new, in, if the VAR of the portfolio decreases, then the new trade is actually beneficial. It's, it is a risk reducing or it is a hedge. The moment you added another company, let's say Google, your portfolio VAR fell down. The, the riskiness has fell down. So maybe that Google is hedging the other companies. So if this is the VAR is decreased, the new trade is risk reducing, or we call it as a hedge. Otherwise the new trade is risk increasing as these two things can only happen, right? Okay, so as I was saying, this is the first method known as the full revaluation method. Now, is it time consuming? A lot, lot, right? What is the alternative method? The alternative method is known as the approximation, okay? This is, an, this, this is just an approximation. If you work with full revaluation, 
no wonder you will get the most accurate results. It is going to be time consuming for sure, but accuracy will be there. The alternative method to calculate the incremental VAR is nothing but you take the marginal VAR and you multiply it by the amount that you're adding, reducing, whatever that you're adding. So you're adding, let's say $20,000. So you take the marginal VAR of that particular asset, let's say TCS, you're adding 20,000 worth of more of TCS. So you just multiply these two things, you get your incremental VAR. But again, this is an approximation Accuracy, not so accurate, but it's very close to this full revaluation approach that we have. Fair enough. So this is why on Shweza, you have this particular formula, but there's no intuition as to why do we do this, right? And if you don't understand the full revaluation, you'll not be able to appreciate the approximation method. So this is the approximation method that we have. Fair enough. Let's move to the calculation of the incremental VAR. But before I calculate that, uh, I have to talk a little about the variance covariance method. Why do we use the covariance method and so on and so forth? Variance covariance because variance is what the volatility of the variance, right? The standard deviation volatility. Covariance is the covariance covariance between these uh, among the assets. That's the reason we brought the variance covariance because. We are talking about more than one risk factor. Standard deviation is already a risk factor to us. Now we are talking about the correlation as well. So when we have multiple risk factors, we are looking into the variance, covariance matrix. Any questions that you have, uh, you know, uh, so far, please uh, feel free to ask and get, get your doubts clarified. Okay, so assume you have a two asset portfolio with $8 million in asset A, $4 million in asset B, the portfolio correlation is this, and the daily standard deviation is this, respectively. What is a 10 day VAR? So we're looking at 10 day VAR, okay? This is the same example that I've brought from the market risk correlations chapter to understand the variance covariance method in a better way. So calculate the 10 day VAR at a 99% confidence level. So what I'll do first is I'll create a variance covariance matrix. Okay. First I'll create that. So here in the example, we are given that the portfolio correlation is okay. We'll, we'll come to that. Thus for asset A, the standard deviation is this for asset B, the standard deviation is 2%, right? And the correlation is 0.6%. So how do you calculate this particular thing. So see, all these things will be given to you. If not, it's very simple to create that. So on this, this particular thing, we have the, as you can see, covariance between one and one. So that means it is nothing but the variance of one, let's say one. And here also on the diagonally opposite side, you will have the variance of the other asset or the B. And here you can see it's one, two, two, one. It is one and the same on this diagonal side. So it is nothing but the covariance. How do you calculate the covariance between one and two? You need the correlation between one and two. Standard deviation of one, standard deviation of two. Correlation given, yes, 0 0.6. Standard deviation, yes, 0 0.015, 1.5%. For the other one, we have 2% as the standard deviation, 0, 0.0. Multiply this thing, you will get 0 0.018. So did you get the, co, uh, the covariance? between those two assets, yes. And if you just take a square root of A, take a square of this, you will get this. Take a square of this, you will get this because this is nothing but the variance. Covariance between itself is a variance. It's like this, covariance between A times covariance between A. So just a square, it's nothing but a square of A. That's what exactly you get the covariance mid. This was important, so that's why I, I spent a little time here. Now, this is how you, using this covariance matrix, this is how you create uh, the variance, covariance method, and we find the bar. So first off, this is the A and this is B. Again, this is A, this is B, right? So we have it here as a horizontally, and this is the vertically that we have it here. So this is a horizontally 
and this is the vertically. Do not get much deep into it. Understand the process. We don't have to get into the mathematics. We are not getting into the uh, the algebra or the uh, for for this particular thing. We are not getting into that matrices calculation. No, just understand the basics. You are good to go. Okay. So how do we calculate this particular thing? The very first thing that we will do is we will take one particular section and that is going to be the horizontally we're going to be multiplying this and then horizontally we're going to be multiplying to this particular thing. So as an example, what we will do is how do we solve this thing? Okay. You will see these things a lot. Okay. How do you solve a matrix by default? This will be multiplied to this horizontally will first do that. And then this will be multiplied to this. Then this will be multiplied but to the first one. The second one will be multiplied to the second. one. That's it. So this is the first step that we will actually do. So eight will be multiplied to this one, which is 0 0.00025. Let's say that then four will be multiplied to this one. 0 0.00018. Then this, the, the bottom, now we're going to be talking about the second portion. Eight will be multiplied to this. Four will be multiplied to this. Eight will be multiplied to 0 0.00018. And four will be multiplied to 0 0.00008 then whatever the answer that you get when you solve this and this, when you solve these things, whatever the answer that you get, you'll get two answers, right? When you get this and this, this and this, you will get two answers. So this is this plus this, this plus this one. Once you get the two answers, you will multiply that with first one, you know, whatever is here, you will multiply that to this, whatever is here, you will multiply that to this. And this is how we solve this matrix calculation. I know it is mathematics, right? It is part of the matrices calculations that you have in um, higher mathematics. We don't have to get into it. We, we simply don't have to get this uh, into it. The only thing is that the intuition is needed. Okay. So this will be multiplied to this. This will be multiplied to this. Okay. And then you again, this to the lower side, this to the lower side. So that's how you do that. So it's going to be a little bit lengthy. Uh, I, I feel that on the exam, not going to ask you like such a lengthy questions. Even if they ask you, it's better that you do it at the very end. Only when you have a lot of, lot of time that you have. So this is how the calculation has been here. So eight, so as I said, this is the, uh, we'll, we'll just take the first portion here. We'll remove this thing. We'll take it later in the next step. So eight is multiplied by this. And then four is multiplied by this. You add it together, you get a separate number. And in the next step, eight is multiplied to this, four is multiplied to this. You get a next step. So once you have these things, okay, once you have these two things, now you bring this thing eight and four, then you multiply. So it's going to be a little faster. Then you multiply this with this and this with the other one. And then you get that entire correlation or uh, the, the entire matrix. See, this is the third step. So this is the given question that is given to us using this covariance matrix. This is the first step. This is the second step, right? You just solve this. You got a number. And then how do you find a bar? So what is this? This is the bar. Uh, this is the volatility of the portfolio in squares. Okay. It is in square. Then how do you find a VAR of the portfolio? You take the uh, Z value, which is 2.33, right? And then uh, the VAR of the portfolio. So what do you do is that simplistically, okay, I'll tell you one thing, which is not there in Schweizer as well. This number is given as square millions. I think I'll, I'll just take you to the, to the Schweizer as well so that you relate, relate to it. Okay. So where is it? Okay this particular thing. So this is the example of a, a matrix notation that we have it here. Okay. So we have these two portfolios, their volatilities. You remember all this thing is created using the volatility squared and everything. So there is no cor correlation. So it is zero. That is why it is zero here. 
Okay. So this is, this is up. So they haven't done this entire calculation, but you can use that example and you can do that. Okay. So four will be multiplied to this two will be multiplied to zero. Four will be multiplied to zero. Two will be multiplied to this, whatever the answer that you get, then that's going to be multiplied to this. And that's going to be multiplied to this. You get this as a final answer. What is this? This is the, uh, this is the volatility uh, or, or the amount that you have that is in squared amount. So what do you do is that you take a square root of this particular thing. Okay. It's the, it's the variance, right? So you take the square root of this particular thing, multiply that to 1 million, multiply that to 1 million. And then you multiply that by the, whatever the Z value is 1.65. And then you get the bar of this particular using this matrix notation. Same thought process is there in that particular market risk as well. Seventh chapter correlation and the same thought process we are using here as well. Very important. You'll be, you'll be wondering how do we get this three, six, eight, you will be confused. Like how did we get this? But the answer is that whatever that you get here, what is this? This is nothing but the volatility squared. So you take a square root to remove this square and you multiply it by the uh, value because this is for $1 it is there. So hence we multiply it to million because we are talking about millions here. That's the intuition. You will get three, six, eight multiplied by the Z value. You will get the VAR. Fair enough. Any doubts that you may have, feel free to ask this. It, it'll take your time. You don't have to spend time again on these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is what the overall uh, calculation is for the matrix notation that we have it here. Okay. Let's, let's move to, so hopefully, uh, that's clear that we have quite lengthy. I would say that, but we'll try to finish it very soon. Okay. This is the variance covariance met, uh, uh, method. Do give it a try after the class as well. Okay. Now let's talk about the calculation of an incremental bar. Incremental bar, as I told you two methods, the full revaluation and the other one is the uh, the other, the other method that we have is, uh, that of calculating the incremental method is nothing but the marginal var, whatever is a marginal var times the amount that you've added to or deleted to a particular stock. So to find, so, so we have two assets here. So we have two assets here, A and B, the volatilities are 6% and, uh, 14%. So volatility is given to us. There are $4 million, $2 million invested in them. If we assume they are uncorrelated, so there's zero correlation. Compute the incremental VAR for an increase of $10,000 in asset A alone. Assume a Z-score of 1.65. Now, how do we calculate the marginal VAR? So again, we need to understand the formula of marginal VAR as well, right? What are the formulas for that? We need to understand. I, either we can use that VAR or the portfolio divided by portfolio value times the beta, right? Just what we saw in, in, in the previous uh, uh, marginal VAR calculation. Or the other one, the marginal VAR that we had was also, uh, you can have the Z value times the, uh, the, 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 the covariance between the asset and the portfolio uh, divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio. So this is the another calculation that you can actually use here. So here, we have the Z value. We have the standard deviation of the portfolio, right? So what do we need? We need the covariance. How do you get the covariance? You need the covariance matrix for per dollar. Again, this is a, this is a different calculation, but in order to get this covariance, you need to again, work with this covariance matrix. That's why I brought that example. That was a much detailed. I don't think so. That's going to be very much required, but again, you do it. And this is a short to uh, a shortcut to this particular approach. So how do you get the covariances here for each one of the asset? We get the covariance by just taking this multiplied by this, and this multiplied by the amount. So basically the, the variance multiplied by the portfolio amount and the variance of the other asset times the portfolio. Amount. 
So even without doing this thing, you can just take the variance multiplied by portfolio variance multiplied by variance is always squared. Okay. Volatility squared. So once you have that, you get these numbers and you divide it by the standard deviation. So this standard deviation is the previous example that we saw in Schweizer. Okay. So this, let me just mark it up. This standard deviation of the portfolio is the calculation that we have in the book in Schweizer. This is the new calculation that you do it. Z score is given to us. We get the marginal VARs for each number. And what is the incremental VAR? Incremental VAR is nothing but the marginal VAR for what asset? A times the amount that you're adding is 10,000. 10, what is the marginal VAR for A is this times the 10,000. It's going to be, you know, six, $644. So that's how or that much the portfolio will change if we go ahead and if we change by this particular amount. This is the concept of an incremental 